Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Van Hook, and I'm Regional Director of the Florida Small Business Development Center at FIU. Um, we are uh, under the FIU's College of Business, and we work one-on-one -on -one with businesses in the community to help you grow. Um, and I just want to welcome you to this really great webinar that's organized in partnership with our um, colleague Orlando Espinosa. Um, he has a rock star panel today. Um, it's actually one of those things on Zoom when you see one person join, basically the more people kept joining, the better the, the webinar kept getting in terms of the panelists. Um, and I started first, so I guess I'm the worst. Um, but um, basically in terms of this, we're focusing on government contracting because um, right now everybody's dealing with the pandemic. Everybody's trying to weather the pandemic. They're looking to pivot the business. They're looking for new business models, you know, new marketing, new opportunities. And so government contracting has always been a, um, a great opportunity for businesses. If you do your research, if you do your homework, um, if you don't try to be jack of all trades, master of none, um, basically there's a lot of opportunities for you. And so this is gonna be a really great um, webinar focused on kind of what do you need to do to be successful in government contracting? And it's not actually gonna just be anybody lecturing you. Um, there's gonna be a little bit of lecturing, but we have a really great presenter in Orlando um, but we have some really great real world experience from a number of businesses that have got into government contracting and been, been successful. So they actually can tell you what to do. They can tell you probably a lot of what not to do as well. Um, although I don't want to put that on them because they're all very successful. Um, but at the end of the day, um, this is a great opportunity for your business. Can't stress enough. Do your research, do your homework. Um, don't jump into opportunities. Don't jump into a certification unless you know that's kind of what you need to do. And for our end, SBDC, um, we're here for you in terms of helping you um, get certifications, do research, marketing, um, financials. We also do have a PTAC consultant that can help you in terms of federal government contracting. So with that, I just want to turn it over to Orlando. Um, I just want to thank him for organizing this really great webinar. Uh, we've gotten really great feedback from a lot of the other participants and attendees in the other webinars. So I know this one's just going to be just as great as the other ones. And with that, you didn't log on to hear me. You want to hear from Orlando on the panel. So I'll turn it over to them. Just thanks again. Right. And thank you, Brian. Listen, and thank you, everyone that's actually joining. Uh, feel free, question time. We, we actually always extend this a little. It's supposed to be an hour. But our, our goal is to make sure that we provide as much information and clarity. Uh, we don't talk business um, industry specific. Um, uh, and I think that that's one of the main things that we definitely want to make sure that we provide as much information as we can. Uh, um, and I, I do believe that honestly, a lot of people in this stage right now, when it comes to their business, they're just trying to figure out what's the best way in order to, to gather new resources, new information. And we actually enjoy putting all these uh, webinars together in partnership with the SPDC. So without further ado, let's go ahead and, and, and let's get the presentation started so we can be mindful of your time. And I want to go ahead and have the panelists and, and panelists, you know, if you want to speak, unmute yourself and I'll give you the, uh, the actual screen so you can chit chat and share. I, I do want to share that uh, Jonelle Hine with the, um, the SBA, she's not going to be able to participate today, but she will be on the call, uh, the webinar on uh, Thursday, uh, writing that winning uh, proposal that we can talk a little bit more. But let me go ahead and, and give the, um, the screen to Tasha. Uh, Karen and Moise so they can introduce themselves. So Tasha, take it away. All right, great. Hi, I am Tasha Cunningham. I am a managing partner with the Brand Advocates. I'm very happy to uh, be here today. We are an advertising and public relations uh, creative agency that specializes in public sector work. So we have a lot of uh, government and municipal contracts. Uh, we do branding, advertising, graphic design, um, ele most elements of communication. Uh, for the public sector. All right, thank you, Tasha. Karen. Hi, I'm Karen Vieira, owner of the Med Writers. We are a writing agency, um, again, doing marketing similar to Tasha, as well as we do technical writing and other types of writing within the medical field. Um, one of the things that we've done quite a number of um, projects for our clients is helping them write proposals. So we've done a lot of that prior to actually ourselves saying, let's pursue government contracts. But in the last five years, we went ahead and got certified with federal government, woman-owned, minority-owned, AD, um, 
SDB, Ed Wosby, we have a lot of certifications and we jumped in head first, started bidding and we have contracts now with the Department of Health and Human Services and the Army. So I'm excited to share some of my experience with you guys. Yeah, uh, thank you. And, and Moises. Mute myself. There you go. I was able to unmute myself. Moises Montañez from Alta Quality Builders. We're a general contracting firm and we specialize specifically in remodeling and renovations. Uh, we've been doing work for the local counties for the past four or five years. Uh, everywhere from the jock program from the Miami-Dade County Public Schools all the way up to the subcontracting work with primes, which is another opportunity that you could have with the federal government if you want to get yourself started into the federal government and also with the Miami-Dade County. Uh, we've been doing it for the last five years. We've been very successful with those programs. And now we're moving forward into specifically uh, doing more work directly as a prime with the federal government. And, and thank you, Moises. And uh, my name is Orlando. Uh, we, we actually uh, design, develop, and implement curriculum to help municipalities, government agencies uh, market their brand. Um, we, we've actually done contracts in the past with uh, quite a few municipalities and, and uh, government agencies. Um, I, I will let you know that uh, as we move forward, the people that you see here uh, as panelists, um, they are all SBA Emerging Leaders graduates. Uh, Moises graduated in 2014, Karen in 2016, and, and Tasha 2017. And, and, and the focus of, of the program was actually to uh, assist small business owners. Um, we're not running the program this year. It will be running next year. Um, so we will be uh, accepting applications and so forth. But um, what I wanted to highlight was that while we started putting all of this together, we wanted to come in and, and bring the best of the best um, of people that actually wanted to give back and assist and help. And, and one of the things that we want to make sure that you as a business owner, those of you that are actually uh, on the uh, webinar, to ask yourself some questions, you know, because everyone wants to do business with the government. Everybody says, oh, the government has billions to spend, which is actually true. But we want to make sure that you start asking yourself, does the government actually need what you're selling? Because if the government really doesn't need what you're selling, you, you are actually uh, doing yourself a disservice um, by not actually pinpointing and seeing who actually is buying it and so forth and understanding who the customers would be. Uh, but these are some of the questions that we want you to ask yourself um, before you come in and decide. I'm already doing contract work. I already am looking to work with the government or Excel and so forth into that. But one of the things that uh, we will encourage you to do is to take an in-depth look inside yourself and your business and understand that the government wants to deal with people that they can trust, people that they can actually partner with in order to get these contracts fulfilled um, and not the entity so much. But uh, for those of you, if you wanna add anything, just uh, any questions that you may want to ask, unmute yourself. Uh, and if you don't have any questions, we can definitely move on to uh, the presentation. All right. So before you go in and say, is the government work something that I want to do? You have to make an assessment of your business before you leap. So you have to understand your products, your services. Not only do you have to understand your products and services, you also have to understand, is there actually a need for the government uh, to buy. And when we talk about government, we're talking about um, federal, we're talking about state, local. Um, but one of the things that we want to make sure that you understand is to, to stop, to think, to analyze. And then once you understand that, who is buying the products or services that you actually provide and uh, what's going to set you apart from the competition? Um, a lot of times we work with a lot of business owners and the first thing that people, when they say business owners, well, I don't have any competition. Everybody has a competitor at some point when it comes to their business. Um, the one thing that you want to make sure that if you are going to go after some government contract work, you have to be committed. If you are not committed, um, you get one shot to make an impression. And if you cannot perform the work and you are overextending yourself, then you're going to do a, a disservice. So, so spend some time doing research uh, and find out specifically before you come in and start uh, analyzing because the government may not buy what it is that you're buying, what you're selling, but maybe a sector actually does. Tasha. Well, I wanted to just piggyback on what you were saying about the research. It's so important um, that people who are going to sell services to the government understand 
how that government entity works. And you should also know that most of the contracts that they have, that they've already let out, for example, let's say it's a marketing or PR contract, I can go in and look at the archives of all the past times that they let that contract out for bid and take a look at who won, what the correspondence was, who, you know, what companies submitted. There's a lot of research and a lot of people don't realize this when they go to start working with governments or to try to get a contract. There's so much research that's already there from past procurements that they've held. So you can figure out exactly who your competition is and do a little bit of recon, go to their website, find out you know, a little bit more about each of these companies. But all of that information is publicly available to you. Sometimes you'll have to do a public records request to get it. Other times the government agency will have all of these archives on their website. And then in addition to the archives, they also have forecasts. So they'll be able to tell you in 2023, this certain contract is coming out, or in 2024, here are all the contracts that we plan to um, let out as a municipality. So once you know that, you can start pre-marketing. So if you know that next year there's going to be a public relations contract for um, you know, the city of Altamont Springs, for example, which is one of our clients, if there's going to be a PR contract, I can find that information out and start figuring out who do I need to talk to to present my company and my skills for this particular contract. So all of that information is available to you, whether you have to request it through a public records request or whether the municipality puts that information on the website. That's a critical tool for you to assess before you leap to see, okay, who's, who's winning these contracts? Maybe you want to partner with them. Maybe you want to go for it yourself. But all of that information would be available after you've done your research. So that's something I always stress. Yeah, and one thing, Tasha, that I actually want to piggyback on, because because Tasha and I, we were talking about this, and I know that Tasha actually uh, is one of the clients with the uh, SBDC, and I know that she actually was working with uh, Lewis with PTAC. Um, that's one thing that I will, um, and, and I'll say that when it comes to resources, my thing is, is that there's plenty of resources out there, and I know that Tasha has met with Lewis a couple of times, um, and I think that that's the main thing. You don't have to navigate this by yourself as a business owner. You have business owners right now that are sharing information, but you also have resources that are out there, um, especially with the SBDC, as Brian mentioned earlier, that before you make the assessment, uh, reach out and talk to someone that has the know within the actual um, business and so forth, especially when they already understand government contracting. Karen, I didn't see you on mute. <laughs> I didn't. Um, I feel like there's so much I could say, but I didn't want to jump in prematurely because I know I have so much to share on some of the future slides. But with this one specifically, what I'll say is that it's very important to do your research, to know who your customer is. So for me, my business is medical writing. So what I thought through in advance was who needs the services that I provide? Who needs things written up? Uh, what agencies are doing medical research? What agencies are communicating health information? These are the times, types of things that we do. And we created a list and we said, you know, we were going to go after and we had a federal list. We said, you know, Department of Health and Human Services, which is CDC, FDA, NIH, things like that. Um, Army Medical Research. And we, we had a list. And then we said, okay, let's look at the state health department, the county health department. And when we went through the procurement lists, and so there's different websites we're gonna go through in a little while. On the federal side, we found a lot of stuff, but then when we looked on the state, hardly anything, maybe once a year, there was something we could bid on. Um, with county, maybe like once in a lifetime, there was something we could bid on. There really wasn't a lot. So if we wanna go after county and state, we're going to have to approach them with ideas as to how we can work with them or for them. Whereas with federal, it was low hanging fruit. There was tons of stuff there. We just had to bid on it. So we made the decision then to just focus on federal because for our business, that's what made sense. And that's really the process you need to go through for your business. So if you guys want to just real quick in the Q and A chat, put, you know, the type of business you have and what types of agencies you're going after, whether it's federal, state, um, county, municipalities, school district, 
And then that way we can tailor some of the information that we're going to present so that we're talking directly to you. And I saw somebody's question asking, you know, what opportunities are there for landlords? So it depends if you're trying to look for short term rentals, long term rentals, um, the type of property is, you know, so there's a lot that you would need to think through what are you offering and then who needs what you're offering and where could you go after that? It might be that there is opportunities for you within federal, county, state, but we wouldn't know that until we know um, the type of, of properties you're talking about. Mm -hmm. right. Orlando, I did have one just thing to note too. One thing you guys need to remember when you're getting into government contracting is well, sometimes you won't have to grow, grow your staff or your team to service a contract. A lot of times you will. So for a lot of businesses, you also um, might not necessarily be prepared for that growth. So you need to be also think through kind of like to take on a contract. What is it going to require for your business? Do you have to have additional people? Um, is it going to change your operations? Things like that. And also think through what are you going to do if you win the contract? That's great. Yay. What are you going to do if you don't win the contract? Is it going to kill your business? So those are some of the kind of key things to think through. Um, like you said, we'll kind of uh, look before you leave. So I just want to yeah. throw that in. And thank you, Brian, for sharing that. Moises, I know you wanted to share a couple of things. Yes, uh, going back when you're doing your research, uh, uh, what's really important is to identify who your customer is going to be. And sometimes, like Karen stated, there's some low hanging fruit in one places and there's county work and there's public work in, in for the Miami-Dade County Public Schools. But sometimes, depending on the line of business that you're in, like myself, I was, I was a general contractor, it was really hard for me to go in and bid on a million, $2 million job because I did not have the past performance experience. I didn't have the bonding capacity. So then my true target was not the federal government. It was then the primes inside the federal government that were required for them to have the opportunity to uh, supply their requirements for SBEs and SBAs and everything else. And I could get the experience through them as a subcontractor. So maybe you might be starting out in this, in this arena and you might want to go in as a prime or as to provide the service directly to all these different agencies. However, sometimes it's better off to go in as a subcontractor, learn the ropes, learn how the system works, learn how, learn how to do all the paperwork because the paperwork will kill you. you. Sometimes the job is three days long, but the paperwork is two months long. So the paperwork up front, no paperwork to close the job, and then the paperwork to get paid. So all that you need to learn. So don't chew more than what you could swallow. And probably you might want to start out teaming up with somebody or working on as a subcontractor for a prime that's already doing the work. Yeah. And thank you for sharing that, uh, Moises, because I think that that's also part of the, the actual assessment that you have to make. I, I know that for, 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 for myself, um, one of the things that I've done is that I actually started researching the, the marketplace and, and trying to figure out who was buying, um, what they were doing. But to your point, or what they needed, I sat back and I also made an assessment of myself and where my weaknesses lie. And I had to come to the groups that I have a weakness. Um, and my weakness is that I tend to overthink and I don't have the time to sit down and write a full blown proposal. But I know that both Tasha and Karen have that capacity and they're good at it. So I know that um, for us as a company with m and Media, what we've done is that we work with them on, on numerous uh, proposals and numerous projects that as a subcontractor, I'm not, listen, I am not looking to come in and control anything. I don't want to control anybody. I don't need to be in charge. I just need to make sure that when we do go after contracts and we are submitting proposals that we've done the necessary research. So when I get a phone call from Tasha, hey, Orlando, listen, we're going to go ahead and, and, and bid this. We need to uh, submit a proposal. I need your, 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 your uh, resume. I need your, your um, past performances. But then again, that information is already on her hard drive, the same way with Karen. And I think that that's one of the things that we have to look at, especially with contract sizes, because I've seen a lot of businesses that they don't market the research. They go in and they say, oh, I'm going to do business with the government and come to find out that they probably have a colleague, a, an actual person that they know that's already doing work with the federal government, that maybe they can come in and add their services, that maybe they can come in and, and get their feet wet in order to come in and, and do work. Because right now, what you need to do is you need to start creating a strategy. 
And when it comes to marketing to the federal government, the government does not care about ROI. The government doesn't care about anything specific. They just want to make sure that they know that you can perform the work that you are actually submitting a proposal for. Karen. Yeah, one of the things that I highly recommend, and I'm reading through some of the things in the Q&A, some of the types of businesses and the opportunities you guys are looking to go after. And I think what is really key is thinking through what they need. If you haven't got your foot in the door yet, I saw somebody, how do I get in as a sub? Here's the thing, to get in anywhere, whether as a prime or a sub, and for those of you that don't know the lingo, learn the lingo. So prime means you have the contract directly and sub means you're working, like Moises said, under another company. So whether you're trying to get in as a prime or a sub, you need to show up looking good. You need to show up looking like you've done this or similar type of work for someone well in the recent past in the last three years. So whether it was you did it as a job and now you've left that job and you're doing it on your own as your own business, whether you have employees or subcontractors on your team that have done it somewhere in the past, you need to show up looking like you have done this. I know this type of work. We know how to get it done. And that's how you really get in. Um, so showing up looking good would be, you know, my biggest advice to everybody. Um, but the most important part is how, the how do you get in? So what I talked about was how we got in as a federal contractor. And for us, that's easy. The federal government is the easiest of all the governments to work with. And I know that sounds backwards because people think, well, it's easier to work with the school district or the county or the city because they're local and I can go in and meet with them or whatever. But the truth is the federal government is easiest because they have a lot of things in place and everything comes out on websites. So right now, um, the majority of their contracts are gonna come out on a website called beta.sam.gov and we'll give you all the websites on a future slide. So you wanna search and see what's easy, what's the low hanging fruit, where are, so I saw somebody saying, you know, recruiting, they do a recruiting business, somebody else does software development. So type in some of the things, if you build an app, type in app development into, you know, beta.sam.gov and see the types of um, solicitations that have been put out in the recent past for the type of work you do for recruiting, for hiring, for different types of things. And if you don't see something, don't get discouraged because here's the thing, it may not have come out so niche. So my company does medical writing, very, very niche, but there are contracts that I've seen uh, friends and, and other business owners that I'm friends with, they get a big contract that's to build a website and write the content that goes in the website. They can give us the content development piece. They build the website. They're the tech side of things. So sometimes you just need partners. Like Orlando said, he comes to me, he comes to Tasha. We all work together. So don't get in the mindset of like my business is an island and I have to do this all by myself because it doesn't work. Yeah, and thank you, Karen, for, for sharing. Um, I don't know if Moise is, if Tasha, if you want to add anything uh, to that, um, if you do, I'm just looking, Tasha. Well, I was just wanting to piggyback on what Karen said that, you know, teaming and, and figuring out, because a lot of these contracts, you have to realize you're not going to get it on your first try. You're going to have to build a super team, build recognition with that agency. Most government agencies are going to buy or give contracts to people that they trust and people that have that track record. The easiest way to get a track record is to become a sub, to get to, to be a sub to whoever is the prime for that particular contract. You go in as a subcontractor, perform that little piece of the job, whether it's writing the content, building the website, whatever you have to do, you perform that, you get a great testimonial from the prime and you start building, building up your reputation as a trusted company that the prime companies will uh, want to have on the team. And once you start doing two, three, four, five of those, suddenly you have that track record of a year or two that you've done really great uh, performance as a sub, and then you can make that leap as a subcontractor. It's very hard to just go in on your first contract and win it as a prime. Um, you know, the, that's one of the best pieces of advice, and I've been doing this for almost 20 years, one of the best pieces of advice I would give is start as a subcontractor. Start off with a little piece of a contract, do it well, and make a name for yourself from there. 
Yeah, and, and thank you, Tasha. Moises. Yes, uh, she's absolutely right. The the very and another another piece of advice is, don't go in saying I'm a woman-owned business. I'm a service disabled veteran. I'm a SBE certified. Go in trying to find what their problem is and how you're going to solve it. And, and I'm going to use myself as an example. Uh, you have companies that win a, a, a contract or a prime contractor and they're from out of the state, but they need to comply with the requirements of serviceable veteran. So one way that we've approached it is that, by the way, this is what we could do. We could solve all these issues for you, like drywall, framing, plastering, and all these miscellaneous work that we could combine into one contract. And that way you only have one person that's going to take care of all this. It's, instead of splitting it out in five different small contracts, you want to have one contract. But since this is a service disabled veteran owned business contract that you've been awarded by us executing this amount of work, you're well helping you comply with the requirements of 51% self-performance. So not, not, you didn't go in saying that I'm going to help you comply with your 51% if you, you give it to me. You're saying this is what I can do for you. And by the way, will help you to do that. Uh, also that what is the solution that you're gonna provide to that prime contractor? You could, like I just mentioned, you could go back and say, hey, I could do all these parts, research what the, the contract is, what they're performing, what their difficulties are, and you're gonna see it once you read through the contract or when you see the agreement, you see that they have all the, or the scope of work more than, more than likely is gonna say, you have all these different parts and how I could help you solve those problems. Uh, and always be mindful that just because you're a, you're a small business and yes, you're an 8A or you're a service disabled veteran, you're not guaranteed a job. You have to perform, perform, perform. And then the best way to do it is going in as a subcontractor, solving the pain, and then you're able to continue to grow upon that. Yeah, and one of the things that I will encourage um, all of the businesses that are out there, um, I know that right now we're at the stage where we're trying to figure out um, how do we build relationships? How do we talk to people when all is said and done at the end of the day, it's like we are in quarantine, we're inside our homes, we're actually waiting or we're working. I will tell you that there's a lot of um, entities out there that they are still networking. They're using the uh, platform by way of the actual, um, the actual internet. But I will encourage you right now that send out emails you know the great thing about um working with the uh the government is that all of that information that they have out there is public information look for a lot of okay it looks like we lost orlando for a second his internet might be unstable but i'll jump in here with what he was saying i'll piggyback on that and i've been actually attending more events now in the light of this COVID pandemic than I was before. Because as a federal contractor, a lot of the events are in Washington, DC. Um, one of the contracts I have is with a army medical research facility. That's the biggest army uh, research facility. They're level one trauma, whatever, they're in Texas. And so I had to travel before to go all these things. Now they're doing virtual webinars, virtual small business fairs, virtual, um, I've attended virtual industry days and industry day is where an agency says, we're gonna showcase what we need help with. All the big companies that are already working for us that you might wanna sub under, we're gonna invite them to come in and everybody's there so the end user of what you offer is there that you can talk to the big company that's doing work with them already that you might want to subcontract with is there so get out to these events i actually was on a call earlier with a big um, prime contractor for the federal government they do a lot of work for cdc and other agencies and i would love to get in with them as a sub and i was on there and the lady was talking and i asked a question simple and my question was, I own a business doing medical writing. We are a team of doctors and scientists and you know, we do technical writing, marketing writing. Is that something that your company has a need for? And if so, who would I contact? And how do you recommend I reach out and find their contact information? Simple. She said, yes, we have a need. And then I said, oh, great. Well, by the way, like Moises said, I am 8A, I'm woman owned. I'm minority owned, 
small disadvantaged business, EDWOSB, and I started listing off. We're pursuing HubZone right now. She said, please send me your contact information. Cha-ching. So get out, talk to people. This is how you get in as a sub. You meet people. You're not going to get it. I, I used to say you're not going to get it sitting at home because that's what Orlando taught me. But you can get it sitting at home. But you have to be on a webinar, a virtual event, a virtual, you know, fair, a virtual something. So get on those things. They're happening. They're awesome. Do it. Yeah. Hey, Karen, am I back? Now, listen, and that's how you have to be succinct because I said, listen, my internet today has been acting up. So you need to, if anything happens, if I freeze, somebody take over. And that's how you have to. You have to have the same mindset when it comes to working with people right then and there. And I think that that's one of the main things that I think one thing you cannot be is timid when it comes to going after working with the government. And another thing is a good leader is willing to share the spotlight and excellent leaders willing to give it up. So one of the main things that you have to let people know how good you are and build on that. And once you build on that, the opportunities are gonna come in, especially when it comes to registration. You don't need to be registered with everything. The key word for me this year was being intentional. So if Karen, Tasha, Moises have certifications that I really don't want to go after, but they have these certifications that we can build on that, it just makes it easier. Tasha. Okay, all right. One of the um, questions on here, uh, Fabio, I guess, is asking, where do you find out about these networking events? For most of the government agencies and municipalities, their procurement departments, have these virtual events they do match business matching so any target that you're looking at just register with that entity through their procurement department and you'll be able to get all of the information the different industry days they put out um, you know whatever events they're having you'll be on the list to receive them so that you can participate um, but that's that's where I would usually find out about networking events. That's a very easy and quick way to do it. And they do all the work for you by sending you the email. Yeah. And make sure that you share also information. I know that we have Berta uh, on the phone with La Vela Coffee and, and Berta, whenever she needs anything, she'll call me and she'll need resources. You know what? And I'm looking at Maria Gutierrez. I'm also looking at, you know what, uh, Veronica. Uh, these are people that when we talk to, I'm like, hey, listen, get on this webinar sit down and talk to people and build on that because information is, it, we're being undated with so much information, but the overall goal is that how do you simplify that information? And sometimes it's just having a conversation. Sometimes it's just having a dialogue and building with that um, because I think it just makes it easier, you know, moving forward uh, with the registration and so forth. So uh, one of the things that we definitely want to talk about is, you know, Moises was talking about this also, the bandwidth you have to know what you're capable of doing when it comes to your business. So your capability statement, how good and competent you are. Listen, if you are not believable, if you go to talk to a procurement officer and they don't believe what you say, you have to be the best. And I'm not talking about being conceited. I'm talking about being convinced. You have to be the best person out there to do the job, but you, you have to back it up. So I think that that's one of the main things is understanding your network, uh, the marketing, your past performances, but it's building these relationships. I do what I do within my business because of the relationships that I've been able to establish with entities like the SBDC, the SBA, and the small businesses that we work with because it's got to be a win-win situation. When you come in to do business with the government, you can't be selfish. You have to be able to work with other people that can do the, the job uh, and may have past performances, but you also have to be um, candid and honest with yourself. So Moises, if you can elaborate a little bit on, on that, because I know that uh, when it comes to one of the things that Moises always says, and I love, is that you have to be willing to work uh, on your business, not in your business, and, and highlight. And, and Moises is one of the people that's as competent, as capable as can be when it comes to what he does. Thank you, you're, you're so kind, Orlando, yes. When, when you're starting to grow your business and you're starting to get into the federal government, you won't be able to do everything yourself. So, you, you know, one of my aha moments in the, uh, when I was going through the program was that, you know, am I too much in my business or am I working on my business to make it grow? 
And, and the capability statements are really important because you could show that procurement officer or that prime contractor, this is what I can do. And when you put together that capability statement, you take the time to think, what am I actually capable of doing? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? And what do I excel in? So when you put that capability statement together, it's not just to give it to somebody, but also to understand what I can do and I cannot do. So that way I don't fall flat on my face like I like to say. Um, so, and capability statements might vary from one agency to the other, depending that it, they need to be tailored to them. So let's say, for example, if I'm going to walk into, we just had it called, we were called in by the Coast Guard, they needed to get some, some offices repainted. And when we walked in, we told them, well, one of the biggest issues that you have is that we're going to have to phase this out because we can't get all these people out of here at the same time because you need to continue to work. Second is how we're going to move all your furniture. So when you go in for that bid or you go and talk to that procurement officer to do that walkthrough and you're capable and you're bringing things up that are going to be issues for the performance of the work, if, if they say this is a competent person. And that's because you know your capacity, you know your capabilities and what it takes to get the job done. So a small job of a paint job became more of a logistics issue for them than actually painting the walls. So they kind of held off on that to be able to phase out the project and now they're going to come back and, and, and issue it again because we brought that up. Uh, you, how are we going to perform this work with all these people in here? Uh, and they didn't think about that, believe it or not. So be mindful and, have, and always when you go and see your procurement officer or your prime contractor, what solution can you provide? I can't stress that enough. What's the solution that you could provide or if you could foresee a situation bring it up and create, you know, bring a flag and say, hey, I believe this could be an issue. How, you, how is this going to be addressed? And uh, believe it or not, you start building a name for yourself. Yeah, the, the, the one thing that you cannot be when it comes to government contracting is shy. Uh, the other thing is that you can't be silent uh, when it comes to sending emails, introducing, um, and sometimes even getting rejection. When you sit back and, and we become a society right now that when people are texting, they want to respond in two seconds. When people send an email, they want a response in, in, in three, three seconds. You have to be patient, but you definitely have to be driven and you definitely have to come in and, and focus on what you're capable of doing. So I didn't freeze. I was just waiting to see if Karen or Tasha wanted to share anything. I can jump in and share something. You know, one of the things for me in my business, all we do is write. We don't do anything else. Uh, we do some consulting work, but for the most part, even that consulting work looks like writing. We will do some research on a topic and write something up for you. So besides writing and editing, we really need to partner with other companies because here's what happens in the government. Sometimes they have a little tiny project that's just writing, but for the most part, they have bigger projects that have other components to it. So one of the things that I really recommend is building relationships in order to have the vision that one day you're going to see a contract and what might it need. So in my business, that contract might need video content, not just writing. So we have a network of videographers, video editors, video animators, these types of people. Um, it might be that we do some work to support a federal agency and we write up all these um, interesting studies and reports and data and now they want it presented at an event where doctors or scientists or influencers come and hear about that information that we compiled. So I have friends that own businesses that do events. So you see where I'm going with this. You've got to have people in your back pocket because what's going to happen is you're going to see a contract and you're going to say, I can't do this because I only do this piece, but it needs these other pieces. So start working on that now. Start meeting other businesses. Take a look even in the chat right here and see some of the other businesses that are talking here. There might be someone that you can send a message privately and directly to and say, hey, I'm in a complimentary business to you. Can I have your contact information? These are the events where you meet people. Somebody on here already has government work. I do, Tasha does, Moises does, Orlando does. There's other people in the chat that are talking about they have some or they're already working as a sub. Meet people because you don't know what's gonna come out of that, but you definitely need all of those people at some point 
they will come in useful. I have a spreadsheet where I just keep track of, I met this person, they do this thing, they own this type of business, they have this certification, and then I can quickly pick up the phone, hey, there's a hub zone contract, I'm not certified as a hub zone, you interested in bidding this with me? Two seconds, hey, there's a curriculum development and presentation contract, Orlando, you interested in bidding it with me? It's for the, what was that one we did, Orlando, FDA or something? Yeah, and just, quick quick you've got to think way into the future what will my business need to succeed and who do i need and build those relationships now ahead of time yeah and and i know that someone asked a question but uh fabio i actually wanted to address uh your um do it recruiting and staffing maybe what you do now is that you provide that service to some of the actual contractors out there uh, that already have the prime, the prime contractors, maybe you have, you know, what the staff that they actually need and they can actually come in and hire these people through your staffing company. Sometimes when we sit back and look at, it's not just coming in and going directly to do work with the federal government um, or, or state or local, it's actually coming in and providing a service to the entities because maybe someone needs promotional items. Um, one thing that you wanna do is that, um, I actually saw promotional items from a local organization I won't make mention of, but when I look at it, I looked at it and I'm like, oh, listen, I can tell that you didn't have someone professional come in and provide this. Well, what do you mean? I think you went directly to a source I won't mention the country. I said, because this right here, this is misspelled. What do you mean? This is misspelled, this word right here. So how do you, as a professional organization, look like when you don't have someone coming in and looking after your best interest? So I think that one of the key things is partnering. And, and someone actually asked a question about bid sync, uh, Tasha, and I know you wanted to come in and address that. Um, yeah, so I did answer it in the chat, but we do, a lot of times you'll find that these municipalities, especially now with COVID-19, are making uh, people who want to bid on contracts or firms that want to bid on contracts use a software platform like BidSync or DemandStar to upload the bid and provide it to the agency. So you can't send it to the agency directly. You have to go through BidSync or, or one of these other services. So you're going to see that. Um, more and more, especially with um, COVID-19, uh, where you can't print it out and deliver to the p particular municipality, but you don't always have to pay for it. So in the chat, you'll see that I said, you know, we do use this thing, but it's only really when we're going after something that a particular municipality says the only way you're going to get information on this bid is if you go to bid sync and so that means all of the people who want to bid on it all of the firms have to do the same thing you have to do and go to bid sync um, we do pay for bid prime um, and demand star where you can download the actual solicitation you just pay one uh, monthly fee and you can find out who the plan holders are um, who else has downloaded it so it does provide a lot of good analytics for um, you know, business development tracking. So we do use this thing, but that's mostly because the, the municipalities that we bid with are using this thing as well. Yeah, and, and thank you. And I think that one of the key things is looking at some of the questions and so forth. And listen, Maria, congratulations. You know, um, one of the things that you have to provide answers, I know that she was actually talking about how, you know, they were working with uh, one of the uh, federal government um, and, uh, they have an OSHA compliant shop. I think that those are the things that you have to make an assessment what we were talking about with one of the first slides um, and then keep working on that and just trying to actually look at where are these opportunities? Where can I find them? Um, you know, we talk uh, definitely a lot about the internet online, looking at certain websites and so forth, third party. Um, but I think that one of the main things that we also talk about is that how are you addressing questions to other people? Now, I'm the type of person that if I go to someone for a, um, a response and if they don't provide an answer, I don't just sit there, oh, they don't wanna help me. I go to someone else. The one thing is that you cannot get discouraged because unfortunately we do have a lot of people that actually are extremely selfish, that they wanna hoard information. Uh, there's plenty of, of contracts to go around and plenty of work to go around. And we are mindful of, of being able to pay it forward. That's why we do webinars like we do with the SBDC. That's why we do uh, the webinars, you know, uh, and, and talk about P, PTAC and, and what work they're doing because we see the value of how they actually help. The one thing is, is that you cannot. 
We lost Orlando again. I'll jump in here. I don't know what he was about to tell you that you cannot do, but on this slide here, where it's talking about searching opportunities, we've listed a lot of the websites here. Um, and there are many more because we just talked about BidSync. And so there's a lot of other sites that you could use, but definitely this is a slide to pay attention to because here we've got some of the federal sites. We've got the state. If you're in the state of Florida, if you're outside of Florida, sorry, but we just assumed the Florida audience and put the Florida sites. We put some of the procurement sites for Miami specifically, but if you're like me, I'm in Palm Beach County, you know, put in the chat if you need us to give you some other additional sites. I have answered a few questions in the chat. Um, people were asking about certifications. The website for that um, for federal is certify.sba.gov. In there, you can get certified as woman owned um, Ed Wosby, which is economically disadvantaged, women-owned. Um, I think that that's the portal now for doing the ADA certification. Um, and I can't remember if that's the portal for doing Hub Zone. I'm not sure about that. But I yeah, I so certify. Go, sorry, no, I believe everything's going to go through certified. Yeah, I think so too. Eventually, because the ADA now is being done through there too. Right. So certified.sba.gov isn't on here, but that was kind of what we were talking about on the last slide with getting certified. So you definitely want to save that site as well. And I know that Brianna is going to email out the um, entire PowerPoint to all the registered attendees. So you'll get this. Yeah. And just to piggyback on that as well, one thing in addition to these sites, something that you can also do, which we've gotten several contracts by doing this, you can always, and I think Karen was saying this earlier, when you figure out what, a pro what problems these municipalities or government agencies have, if you have the idea to solve it, most of the time, if, a, if you can perform the work under a certain um, amount, um, like let's say the municipality says anything under $50,000, we don't have to conduct a procurement for. So that means you could go in and put an unsolicited proposal together to solve this problem. And if you can do it under $50,000, you may be able to negotiate this with them, do it as a pilot project, do it as a one-time thing to test it, and see if you're able to get a contract that way by just going in and solving a problem. And if you can do it under whatever their procurement threshold is, then you would be able to work with them and get that, um, you know, get that kind of uh, smaller, it would be, a, of course, a smaller contract, but you would be able to get your foot in the door by a solving the problem, having certifications that they, um, you know, take to, can take advantage of, like DBE, SB, whatever other certifications you have, and just go in and pitch them and say, hey, I notice you have this problem. I can, my company can handle this, and we're only going to charge you forty-five thousand dollars, but your procurement threshold is fifty. Maybe you would be able to, um, you know, work with them and come to an agreement where you can do this work and solve the problem for them. So that is something that um, you can do. You can definitely pitch them unsolicited proposals. So I would recommend that if you know that you can 100% solve a problem that a government agency has. And I'm back. <laughs> Hello, yeah. welcome back. And listen, thank you, technology. Listen, I was searching for opportunities to get reconnected to the actual internet. So, bum bum. Uh, but I, I do believe that that's one of the main things that uh, a lot of people are asking. We do have a couple of links within the slide that I know that Brianna is actually going to be sharing. Um, so, we're going to talk about the writing the winning proposal. I'll tell you that on Thursday, we're going to have a full blown presentation at one o'clock that's gonna be highlighting um, uh, some of the things that we're gonna be talking about. Um, so, so Karen, if you wanted to come in and, and, and highlight some of the stuff. Um. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure that Tasha and Moises have a lot to share on this too. Yeah. You know, when you're writing a proposal, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, so the most important thing where I always start for my company, we want to see what they want. So there's certain parts of the solicitation that we go through, but I recommend you read the entire solicitation and you make notes. Some of the people on my team, I don't, but some people on my team actually hit print and just print the whole thing. For me, I'm like, sometimes these things are like a hundred pages long. I'm not doing that. I'm super, you know, tree hugger, I guess, but for some people they print it and they sit there with the highlighter and they sit there with, and I highly recommend doing it. 
either using you know the post-it notes to mark certain pages or I do the tabs to mark, you know, here's where certain things are. And even though I'm not the one that prints it, sometimes it ends up on my desk because somebody in the team prints it and then hands it to me. And so that's what I do with it. I put notes all throughout and then I go ahead and I figure out here's what they're evaluating you on. They want to see your experience. They want to see you understand what they need. They want to see that your team has the experience they're looking for, whatever that is and you make sure that you know what they're evaluating you on and you're speaking directly to that. So if they say um, evaluation criteria, past federal performance with similar contracts, there is a subheading in my proposal that says past <laughs> similar performance with federal, exactly word for it. I literally copy and paste. Um, well, my assistant does. I taught her this is how to structure the proposal template. And then I can come in and just type right into that section. Um, I would also recommend that you understand how we are going to do the work. And you might say, but you know, I haven't got the contract yet. It doesn't matter. Um, they want you to kind of do the work before they are going to give you the contract because they want to know you know how to do the work. So you have to put together a plan, whatever you would have done if that contract was awarded. Um, like at the kickoff, you would probably have a plan. Here's what we're going to do. And here's how we're going to do it. And here's the roles. This person is going to do this. And the, we're going to meet on Fridays at two. And we're going to update you on this list of things. Whatever that is, put that in your proposal. Once you have the page limit to accommodate it, put that in your proposal. And that shows that you know what you're talking about. You know how to execute on this. And that's what gets you the edge. That combined with a decent price. And I'm, I didn't say the... You have to have rock bottom price, but a decent price that can compete. Um, you probably will win. That's how I won my first contract. I came in through the back door, I call it, because I had no federal experience as a subcontractor. Um, we had no county, state, none of that. We just came in and we bid and we were the lowest bidder that was technically capable of doing the work. And we showed a really good proposal where we knew the topic. We had a team that knew the topic. We had experience. We'd worked doing very similar things um, for small businesses and larger businesses. We could show we'd worked with Abbott. We'd worked with Merck. We'd worked with Pfizer. We'd worked with Johnson & Johnson, Sanofi, whatever. And they said yes. So just show up looking good um, by explaining as many details as you have the space, but do not go over. If they say 15 pages, it is 15 pages. It's not 15 pages on one line. So definitely keep to their page limit. I have so much more to share, but we're going to actually go into that on Thursday when we have another webinar specifically only on this topic. Yeah, and I think that that's one of the main things attention you have to pay attention to what they're asking for i know a lot of people when they actually submit they don't read when it's like this needs to be signed in blue ink you need to have this check you need to have that check so that's extremely important so i know that my attention span for that specific detail is non-existent so i i normally turn it over to people that actually do have that attention um tasha karen you know um and specifically i think that that is Aside from coming in and building these relationships, what you are telling and talking to a lot of these procurement officers has to be reflected in the proposal that you're writing. You have to be mindful of, of that. So, so Tasha, if you want to share a couple of things, I know we're going to talk a lot more on, on Thursday, um, and then we can go ahead and answer some of the questions that are online. Yeah, one, one of the things that I would say is a lot of times, you know, if this is your first or second time, let's say maybe even your third time putting together one of these, uh, you know, responses to these proposals, there's always a tendency to write, write, write. And a lot of this is you need to show visually instead of telling people, okay, I did this wonderful transportation project for the DOT, show it to them in visuals, pictures of you doing the work, pictures of your team doing the work. Anything that you can show more visual rather than writing 50 million sentences, because one of the things is a lot of these procurements are evaluated by an evaluation committee. So they already have a full-time job. So they already are working for that government agency full-time. If they get 12 proposals for one solicitation, 
they most likely are not going to sit there. Unfortunately, they're not going to sit there and read every single line of every single proposal. That would be great, but a lot of times they don't have the time. So you need to make sure that your executive summary is good and that you're throughout the proposal, you're showing visually what you have done. In addition to telling them about it, don't be so long winded. Show those pretty pictures, your team in action, your team solving the problem. That will go a lot, that, that will go a longer way than, you know, writing a whole thing with no visuals and no pictures, no charts, nothing like that. So I would, I would recommend being more visual and less wordy in your responses. And I think that's a, a good way to, um, you know, convey what your company can do, but showing rather than telling. Yeah, and, and thank you for that. Uh, Moises. Yes, I guess the very first thing that I would suggest is to establish your parameters. What is actually your goal that you can do? Uh, in, in our case, we have a set limit, jobs less than a million dollars, and they have these requirements for performance. Uh, and I do the initial evaluation. Once I pull those jobs out of the, the out of all the search, then I give it to my project clerk and she goes through and digs in to look at all the nitty gritty to make sure that we are gonna, if there's any special licensing, if you need a, any past specific past performance experience, do we meet or we don't meet it? And if so, that goes through the second screening process and then we did the job. Because the last thing you want to do is start putting together a whole package and then at the end you realize, oh, you need a specialty license to be able to do this particular job. So, you know, have some type of screening process and establish the parameters in which you want to play in. Yeah, and keep in mind, uh, listen, there's a couple of contracts that I got um, um, during COVID for webinars and so forth. And uh, I was asked to provide insurance. Um, and uh, you would think that it's an easy task, but because we are in South Florida, um, you know, they had to investigate, they had to look at my website actually had to reflect what it was that I was doing before we would actually be um, awarded the, uh, the insurance and so forth. Uh, so those are requirements right now. You have to look at everything. You need to read the fine print um, in order to be able to, to, to move forward. Um, and, and the key thing is have a game plan. Um, I know that there's a lot of people out there that they say, I provide this, I do this. I, I know that right now, one of the first questions that, that, that was asked or actually was stated, you know, software development. Right now, if you look at a lot of organizations, a lot of government agencies, especially now with everything that's been happening where people are coming in and they are working from home. I mean, we are stuck behind a computer. Uh, we're working within webinars and so forth. And maybe there may be an opportunity to start doing some software uh, for some government agencies and so forth. Um, if you look at, at a lot of the websites right now that they may be clunky, it's almost like a lot are using uh, uh, DOS, DOS, I don't know if that still exists, but it's like, it's so slow. It reminds me of the AOL, that you, when you were trying to connect to the internet, but I shouldn't be talking because that's the issue that I'm having today, uh, but I don't have you're AOL. Dating, you're dating yourself, Orlando. AOL, what is that? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, one of the things that's funny about that, about Orlando, I don't know. <laughs> the joke in that though, guys, is that mm -hmm. when you look at some of these government websites, they are looking like that. And I know that very early on when I said, put in what your business is and whatever, um, Ehor had shared that he has a software development business. And for anybody that's in the tech field, the government needs websites to be built. So if you have capabilities and you can show up looking good with a nice proposal, you can get work because all these websites need to be rebuilt. And they're slowly but surely, you know, chipping away at it and they need new databases added and they need this and they need that. So if you're in that field, it's a gold mine right now. So please get on beta.sam.gov search, go in sam.gov, register. If you don't have a DUNS number, you need one, get the free DUNS number so you can register in sam.gov, do it. Because these websites do look like DOS. And I feel like dealing with some government offices feels like it was AOL dial up, but it's because they need our help. Small businesses are agile and we can do things quickly and we can adapt. And they, they're big and clunky and it's like turning the Titanic and they need us to jump in and do those things quickly for them. Yeah, and that's the key word, beta, beta.sam.gov, okay? So there's a process there and a lot of those opportunities are there. I, I will encourage a, a lot of you right now that um, 
you know, you're asking questions and so forth. There's a couple of, of, of sites. Um, for anything that you need, we're gonna send our emails um, for, uh, for you to answer or ask any questions and so forth. Um, so, so let's come in and, 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 and open it up. I'm not gonna keep it on this slide. I, I think that what I wanted to do moving forward was highlight lighting additional resources that you are going to have access to that Brianna is going to actually send to you. Um, a lot of the websites that are out there, I, I wanna actually focus a little bit more on some of the questions and some of the actual, um, you know, what uh, questions that are being asked and so forth and highlight it. Uh, right now, I know that for Karen and I, we were actually talking to someone that's been working with the VA, with Alex, uh, and looking after a, a couple of, of contracts and so forth. Listen, once again, it's going back to understanding what's out there, but building these relationships. And I know that a lot of you were reading some of the questions and comments and so forth. Don't be afraid to direct something to someone. Hey, Berta, I know that you sell coffee. I'm actually working on an actual contract for an event that's going to be put on XYZ. Let's have a chat. Let's talk. This is my email. This is my phone. Listen, last week on Thursday, we were doing a, a webinar, um, Get Back on Track, and someone was having difficulties when it came to the, the, the CARES Act, the PPP, and the EIDL loan. And I gave them my cell phone number online, and people are like, why would you do something like that? Why not? She needs help. And I think that that's the main thing, that when all is said and done, we have to be mindful that we need to assist and help. And if someone doesn't want to help you, then you know what? Process of elimination. You walk away from that person. You reach out to someone else. So be conscientious of talking, looking at the resources that are out there. Um, and I'm looking at the, you know, Bruni, the uh, freight transportation and warehousing, the federal government, they don't move anything. They buy everything from paper clips to uh, jet planes. So you have access to, and I was thinking of someone from your class, Karen uh, Lorenzo, they did uh, freight transportation and he got his 8A certification and he's doing business with the federal government. I think that those are the main things that you have to look at. That even if we come in and say, well, I only have X, Y, Z. I was also looking at the question from uh, the children's book, uh, Hughes. Um, one of the things that I look at is right now at schools, they may be looking for new books. They may be looking for new literature. They may be looking for new aspects. Maybe, you know what, uh, one of the federal facilities is actually, you know, at housing, you know, a daycare for the kids. And they may need books to buy and so forth, and they have a budget. And that's another good thing that I know that some federal government agencies right now, Jonelle's out here to talk about, but they've got a credit card that they can swipe. And that's sometimes the best contracts to have that they can just swipe a certain amount and you get paid right then and there. So, so yeah, take advantage of the additional resources that are out there. Um, and, and let's open it up to answer some of these questions. Let, let me go ahead and highlight and leave our, our emails out there. So if there's any questions that you may see, Tasha, Moises, Karen, that you wanna tackle or, or, or answer that you've seen, uh, please feel free and, and listen. And thank you, Antoinette. Um, I know Brianna's actually gonna send the actual link for uh, Thursdays, um, um, so um, make sure that you sign up if you haven't. So um, Tasha, Moises, Karen, Moises. I can't stress enough the preparation and to have a system in place to evaluate before you jump in. You know, make sure that you're prepared to go into the federal government. Don't go you know, shooting from the hip because you're gonna get hurt. And uh, not only that, have a system in place because you're gonna be, you have to be compliant to all the rules and regulations of how the paperwork is supposed to be and how you're supposed to get paid. Learn how it's supposed to be done so that way you, learn, you minimize the mistakes and therefore you can really ramp up afterwards. Start small, uh, work under a subcontractor or pick up smaller contracts like Orlando was talking with the credit cards and you start developing the relationships and they start trusting you. It's like everything. You're not gonna have somebody come to your house and tell them to gut the whole house for you. Here's a $100,000 contract. If you don't have any experience or you don't know this person or, or if they can't show that they have done this work before. So just take it in that context. Don't be offended they don't, that you can't, they don't wanna give you a $1 million project. It's just that you have to start small so you can build a relationship. Yeah, and one of the things that actually, Gene, um, I, I just saw your, your question. One thing that you may want to highlight, it says a question, what opportunities would there be for recruiting firms to support the hiring process for the federal, state, and county agencies? One thing is looking at the process that you may have. So let's say if you are actually doing a, an extraneous uh, background check 
uh, because there's someone that needs clearance on doing X, Y, Z. Maybe that's one of the things that you can highlight within your business. That what you're doing is that you are performing uh, background checks on some of the people that you're recruiting to come in and so forth. That that would be beneficial to a company that may be providing a service to uh, the federal government or state or, or county. So that may be an opportunity there uh, uh, with that um, to take advantage of. So, so you just have to think beyond and not limit. Um, Tasha. Well, I would say, um, you know, just to wrap things up, it, it is a very daunting task when you start off in government contracting. And I know it probably feels like, hey, we can't, you won't be able to do any of this and it's too much. But if you look strategically at, you know, all the advice we've given you guys today, um, another thing I wanted to add really quick before I forget is one of the things you can do if you, if there is a contract out there that you want to bid for a government agency, you can also request the winner's proposal from when they want it. So for example, if there's a contract coming out in 2020, the last time it was out in 2016, somebody won it in 2016. You have a right as someone who is uh, probably or prospectively looking to bid on this to request that uh, company's uh, winning proposal from 2016. And that can help you as Moises was saying, can help you to guide you on what your parameters are, do you have the, you know, everything that you need to be able to fulfill this, and you can use the winning company's proposal to help, to help you take a look at that and determine whether you can actually perform this work. So that's another thing that you can do always, um, especially for any government or state agency, you do have a right to those prior um, proposals for the winning firm that won it before you went for it. Yeah, and, and thank you. And, and listen, and thank you everybody for your kind words. Uh, one of the things that, that we wanted to do within these webinars, making sure that you understand that you're not isolated and you're not by yourself. Uh, one of the things that, that when I, I asked Tasha and Moises and, and, and Karen and, you know, Jonelle, um, and one of the things that we were talking with, with Brian um, and Brianna, how do we give information that's worked for us and pay it forward? and not hoard information. And, and listen, and thank you, we're getting a lot of people within the state of Florida and other locations. Um, and one of the things that we have here in, in South Florida is that we're extremely resilient, but we actually believe in helping one another. Um, so any questions that you may have, please keep sharing, um, uh, keep providing, asking questions. Um, I'm gonna share my capability statement for those of you that ask. Um, send an email, I'm more than happy to share that information. I don't hoard information because information is free. And we can research and we can go online, but the way that my brain works is simplification and not overthinking. Moises. Actually, you could go out on my website, altaremodeling.net, and my capability statement is right there under the government tab. So you could just, you could pull it down and uh, look at it and structure it similar if you want to. Use it as a template. Absolutely. Same thing um, in my company. Go to themedwriters.com, click on government. We've got our capability statement there. It might be old, but it's what it looked like when we got our first federal contract. <laughs> so use it if you need help. My company does provide that service. We write capability statements for companies. We help other companies write proposals. We do all types of work helping people search for proposals to bid on, grants to apply to, grant proposals, all that. So if you need help, reach out. My email address is right there on the screen. Happy to help, happy to answer questions for free or do actual work for you if you have a project for us. So let me know. And listen, and thank you everybody. And once again, as I mentioned earlier, and Brian talked about, if you haven't signed up with your local SBDC, uh, it's no cost consulting. Everyone, all of us have worked with the SBDC and have gotten help from the SBDC, whether it's the SBDC or PTAC. Um, they've got some really amazing people that you can actually, um, you know, work with. A lot of them are, are, are business owners. A lot of them are people that have actually been there, done that. And I think that as business owners and as entrepreneurs, we have this camaraderie between us because we are the backbone of the economy when it comes to the United States. We're the ones creating jobs and we're the ones that actually continue to expand and grow. So the main thing is that understand, and, I, and a lot of people hear me say this all the time, um, being an entrepreneur is a lonely journey. That's why we have to stick together. 
and understand that we're not alone, that we have like-minded people out there. So, so thank you, everybody. I know some of you have to drop off of the call. Uh, we, we greatly appreciate you being on the call, everybody. Thank you, Brian. I don't know if you want to share a couple of, of words or if anybody else wants to, uh, but thank you. Thanks to everybody. Thanks to you guys. Thanks to Orlando for dialing in on AOL. Um, really appreciate <laughs> that. Um, we're we're going to take a pool and get some more money so you can get on to like Verizon or AT&T or something else like that. Um, and we got to get him some Xfinity. Yeah. Um, That's I what I have. <laughs> yeah. I just want to thank you guys. It was great content, great information. I saw the comments and um, great feedback from the attendees. And definitely if you, you know, I know there's a lot of folks from around the state um, on it, not just folks in Miami-Dade or Broward and Palm Beach. And there is an SBDC or PTAC near you. We can help you. We can help you in terms of government contracting. Don't just think about the contract and actually getting it and doing the certification. We can also help you with access to capital, with financial management, with business planning, you know, with strategy operations, HR. There's a lot of stuff that, that we can help on. And definitely, like, these folks are really great experts, and they're um, very successful in their contracts. So if they can benefit you guys or we can benefit you guys, like, definitely let us know. Yeah, and, and thank you. And thank you for the um, the AOL upgrade. I definitely am going to need that. Um, uh, yeah, I, listen, I knew that was going to happen today because it's like a sense that you get with your internet. I'm like, yeah, something's not right uh, today. But listen, I, I, it's been great for about, what, month and a half, two months. So no complaining here. But listen, thank you, everybody. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you, Tasha, Karen, Moises, uh, Brian. And thank you, Brianna. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.